Sure, you can use my story to block a condescending teacher from getting his dream role. Been meaning to post this story for a while. I was essentially a MacGuffin in this story so I wasn't sure whether to post this here or too. R. Petty Revenge. Hope it fits. In my sophomore year of high school, I had a social studies teacher who is one of the worst people I've ever met. This teacher, let's call him Mr. Green, had gone to my high school in the 90s and eventually became a teacher. Because he never left, he took out his resentment on the students. He set the tone for the year by roundhouse kicking a kid's desk because he fell asleep on day one. Period one of the year. He would spend most classes ranting about politics instead of teaching us about geography. His favorite week of the year was when he could show us Ben-Hur instead of teaching us anything. It seemed like he loathed teaching. Then why did he do it? Well, Mr. Green mostly saw himself as a full-time assistant football coach. Part-time teacher. He loved football. And the only thing he loved more than football was coaching the school's football team. It was obvious the only reason he put up with teaching was it was the only reason he could. Assistant coach. If he wasn't advocating for Herman Cain's 999 plan he was pushing his classes to go to football. Games. In comes me. 15 years old and painfully uncool. The dawning realization I'm gay is ruining my self-esteem. If one person acknowledges my existence I'll probably K. I. L. L myself. You know. Teenager things. Because I was so cool and well adjusted. I got a role in my first school play. The production was a zombie version of a Shakespeare classic. On the Friday of the show the cast decides to put on our zombie makeup to advertise the show. I walk into Mr. Green's class and sit down. He asks why I look like an exhausted member of KISS. Understandable. And I mention the show that night. This sets Mr. Green OFF. He launches into what felt like a 20-minute rant directed at me in front of the entire class. He says that because school theater productions sometime occur on the same night as his games. They about how plays ruin school spirit because they take people away from the football games. It didn't appear to matter that the theater department would move the date of the show if it conflicted with a home game. This one was an away game. Also, our team was known in the district as being one of the worst. So going to games was a lesson in disappointment and self-flagellation. As Mr. Green lobs this rant at me it's ironic I'm a zombie as I become deader and deader inside. Eventually I fully shut down. He moves on and I sit in class embarrassed. Not helped by the makeup making me look like a raccoon with a crack addiction. If I haven't demonstrated how cool I was already. I was also in TV production. Later that year. I sat in Mr. Green's class watching the video announcements I had spent hours editing the night prior. They were filled with school information but also fun little sketches made by teenagers that weren't good but were having fun and being creative. God forbid. Because I had my TV prod lanyard visible. Mr. Green laid into me again. He ranted about how the sketches were stupid and a giant waste of his time. Note. Ironic since he definitely showed us an episode of Ancient Aliens once in his class. It was clear Mr. Green did not respect any school extracurricular that weren't sports. As Mr. Green was the assistant coach, he made it well known his dream role was to become head coach of the team. In my senior year, he was finally getting his chance. The head coach of the football team was fired after his coaching led to a 4 mid-season opening too. The season. Mr. Green took his place as interim head coach. I wasn't in his class at the time but through the grapevine I could tell he was loving the power. In the spring following another mediocre football season. The school was in the process of finding another coach and Mr. Green was one of their top candidates. Part of the vetting process was having teachers from the social studies department give 
Testimonials on Mr. Green's character. I had told both of these stories to my favorite teacher. Let's call him Mr. Fuchsia. Mr. Fuchsia was my TV production teacher and his wife had directed the zombie play I was in the year prior. So my accounts of his flippant nature toward legitimate classes that weren't football had thoroughly pissed him off. Mr. Fuchsia was also a history teacher. One day. I'm eating lunch with Mr. Fuchsia and he asks. Hey, I have to give my thoughts on Mr. Green as the new football coach. Can I tell the stories you told me sophomore year? I still remember looking at him. Mithousing a subway sandwich. And giving him a strong. Definitive. Absolutely. Mr. Fuchsia brought this story to the selection committee. A month or so later. The announcement was made. Mr. Green was remaining assistant coach while a younger, former alum of my high school was announced as head coach. Mr. Green was furious. He left the team shortly thereafter and never got to be the head coach of the team. While I don't know if my experiences are specifically what led to him getting denied his dream role, I credit myself for at least a part of it. He may not have taught me much but Mr. Green did give me one important lesson. Find it within yourself to respect everyone because you never know when disrespect can bite you in. The ass. TL. Doctor. A terrible teacher and subpar assistant football coach degraded my extracurriculars in front of his class multiple times. I allowed a teacher to tell my story when they were looking for a new head coach and likely denied him his dream role. Fun fact my high school gym teacher, being required to give a paper test at least once in the school year, decided to give everyone a test on football, without teaching any of the rules. Going over my failed score with him later, he couldn't understand how someone did not know, basic, things about the game. Like that the lowest score a team could earn was not one. Ooh, that was good. Karma fully came, round and bit him on the butt. Exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. I had a teacher like this in high school. He didn't attack alternative classes. But he was a lousy teacher and the only reason he was in the classroom was so that he could coach. Football. What an utter waste of time that game is emo. That's awesome op, you did great and I hope that what he did to you was the reason he didn't get it. Sage advice. Be respectful. The toes you step on today may be attached to the ass you have to kiss tomorrow. This is a fun revenge story. But I don't see any malicious compliance. Op, this may not be MC, but I loved every word. You are a great writer thumbs up. I did a ride along with some local cops for a journalism class in college. The officer ran the plates of someone I had known in high school so I was asked if we should pull him over. I said no because the guy was nice to me in high school. Be nice to people whenever possible. It's a good story but not really malicious compliance. It's more like petty revenge if you ask me. Winking face. Glad it worked out, but it's not malicious compliance. I thought teachers like that it were an American TV trope. I didn't realize they really existed and could actually get away with that. Fucking priceless. As another cool kid, please tell this story until the day you die. Oh wow. Two of my kids had a horrible math teacher in high school named Mr. Green. Also the assistant football coach. What is it with these guys? I'm really sorry to hear that. A football coach was one of my favorite teachers freshman year. He was animated and made school fun and funny. Even if his teaching technique was a bit different. I was lucky to go to a school where the soccer stars also were leads in the school play. 
and many a sweaty sports uniform would be worn during rehearsal after games. We also were too small for a football team but our other programs were good. Maybe since the school wasn't dumping 85% of all sports funding into football. Raccoon with a crack addiction. Lol. Good one. My school's head football coach doubled as the health teacher. He talked football injuries. All. The. Time. On the plus side. We learned anatomy. On the negative side. Do you really need to show in graphic detail how the injury happened? I, too, was the cool kid in TV production. Tiger Wing. As a former teacher. For a few years. I'm sorry you were subjected to that ill treatment and that poor teaching. Maybe there was someone else also not doing his job back then your principal. If Mr. Green was that bad of a teacher, it was part of your principal's job to spot that and help him improve or fire him. Even if Mr. Green had tenure, it would have been possible to have fired him if the principal had documented and followed up. It would have required a whole lot of work and time on your principal's part. But if he didn't even try, well, then again maybe your story being passed along did help your principal get rid of Mr. Green. Especially if it was known that Mr. Green wasn't likely to stay if passed over. Sounds like Mr. Fuchsia cared and was able to help in the long run. This following story isn't exactly the same as yours. But I think it illustrates my point. I taught upper elementary grades in the US for a few years back in the late 80s, early 90s. We were supposedly required to implement the use of computers. I did. Both because I thought it was good for my students and because. Well. We were required to do so. And my principal would have noticed if I hadn't. I was put on a district-wide committee regarding increasing the use of technology in the classrooms. At the first meeting we were sharing how we used computers in our school buildings. The committee members from the high school, though, were also sharing story after story about other teachers at the high school who were flat out, refusing to use computers at all. After a few of those stories, I said something like, how can those teachers get away with refusing to follow the curriculum? If I deliberately did that at my school, my principal would notice and he would get after me to do my job. How can they get away with that? Quote, silence around the conference table. The lone administrator on the committee cleared her throat and said something like, well, let's take our coffee break now and come back in five minutes. I figured I'd better drop the subject. Several years later, after I had left teaching, a friend who still taught in that district told me that the old high school principal had retired. And my old elementary principal had been made the new high school principal. I'll bet he did a better job. Cool story but I fail to see how it's malicious compliance. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aracast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.